we're in West Hollywood right now at the famous Tail of the Pup. The Tail of the Pup was in storage for many, many years, and luckily Bobby Green got it out of storage with Alison Rettino, of course, from Vincent Los Angeles, and had it placed again here at the Old Doors Workshop. But this is where there's a quick clip of Jim Rockford in the Rockford Files standing right about here. And today's video is about James Garner. Okay, just uh, read me, just, uh, uh, go, 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 yeah. She told I, ha I have nothing to, I have nothing to feel guilty about. That's what. <laughs> <laughs> so we just turned on to Pacific Coast Highway, and we're going through a mobile home park to get to this place. It used to be really kind of one of those hidden gems of Paradise Cove, and it's still a gem, it's just not so hidden anymore. Uh, the mobile home park is not a cheap mobile home park. This is where uh, Matthew McConaughey had his trailer, maybe still does, Mini Driver lived in the park. And you used to be able to just drive in and park, now it's like it's all huge parking lots inside there, and it's $10 to park for lunch, but it is beautiful as you will see. This is a place I tell locals to go to. I mean, there's Dukes and there's Jeffries and and uh, lots of places that are famous to go along the ocean to have uh, a meal. But this place is is hidden. And oh, the light! They didn't even used to have a light there. I don't think. Beach Cafe, big signing. It's all fancy now. Remember that time, last time we were here was taking your mom for Mother's Day. And we had to take that shuttle. I know. It was horrible. <laughs> it was really uncomfortable. Well, here we are then. Oh, it's pretty empty too. Good. I'm in the very spot where Jim Rockford's trailer was parked in the Rockford Files. I was a big James Garner fan. I even wrote him a fan letter. You can see I got what I got back. Even though I read in his book, his book, which I have here, that he hated like signing autographs and didn't like, he didn't hate it, but he found dealing with the public really tedious. Uh, and he thought it was silly that people ask for their autographs, but I did get one from M.T. Scott. So he made an exception with me. This is back in March of 19. 89. There was a big uh, James Garner auction at Bonhams, I think, recently, and the stuff was actually didn't go as much as I thought it was going to go. I was hoping it would, uh, I thought it was going to go too expensive, so I didn't bid on anything. Uh, and then I'm hoping that they'll have a sub sale because a lot of times the stuff they don't want to sell ends up in another sale. Like a lot of the junk of Robert Evans, I got some stuff really cheap because of him. But the one thing I do own of James Garner's, and maybe he gives this out to fans, I don't know, but this is a James Garner golf tee. He was a big, he loved golfing. So I got the James Garner golf tee, and I got the James Garner autograph of mine. And these things actually made it to <laughs> Paradise Cove, where his trailer was parked. Isn't that cool? It is to me. If anyone wants to visit Paradise Cove, I highly recommend coming for lunch on like a Tuesday because this was absolutely perfect and there was nobody there. Look at this parking lot's empty. We've been here before where it's been bananas. So a really chill set right in the sand. Very good stuff. Paradise Cove, love it. So in the trailer, if you looked out when Jim uh, Rockford was in the trailer, if you look closely out the door, you can see those two round windows. And that, those are the two round windows of the restaurant, which are right there. 
So I think we're actually on the spot that Rockford's trailer was parked in the show. Because there's a picture of he, an angel, he an angel standing there by the parking. You can see the cliff back behind him. But you can see the angle right about there. Boy, they put a lot of stuff in here since. After lunch at Paradise Cove, you can kick off your shoes and walk along some of the most glorious Malibu shoreline. That alone makes the parking fee, which is a bit steep, uh, well worth it. And while I take you there, I'll tell you a bit about James Garner and also a piece of Beach Boys trivia. James Garner once said, For a country boy, I've been to a lot of places and done a lot of things. I have a wonderful family and great friends. He was born in Oklahoma, Norman, Oklahoma. His birth name was James Scott Bumgarner. His early life included a horrid stepmother who, along with the physical abuse, punished him for any possible reason. Sometimes, I'm surprised he even said this in his uh, autobiography, sometimes even making him wear a dress and called him Louise. At the age of 16, he joined the U.S. Merchant Marine Corps, serving in Korea and ultimately earning two Purple Heart medals for being injured in the line of duty. After World War II, he moved to Los Angeles. He attended Hollywood High School briefly and was active in sports. On a teacher's recommendation, he took a $25 job modeling savage swim trunks. He said, that was a reason I quit school. He says, I was making more money than the teachers. He said, I never finished ninth grade. He started on stage and moved on to commercials, and he won his role on the TV show Maverick, and he was off. His hugely popular role of Jet Maverick ran from 1957 to 1962. Garner met his wife Lois in 1956, and after a two-week courtship, they got married, and they remained married for 58 years. A happily married man, they say James Garner never made passes at his co-stars, they say, although he once said he almost considered it with Doris Day when they made the film The Thrill of It All. So this is the cover of the Beach Boys' Surf and Safari album, and that was shot here. So the, the, actually the, it was recorded in August and September of 1962. Actually it was being recorded when I was born. The album turned 60 this year or last year. But uh, And also all those Frankie Avalon and Annette movies, the beach movies, Candy Johnson, that was all filmed right here on the, on the shore of Paradise Cove. I wish they had uh, shot that thing you do out here. That would have been kind of cool. But let's do a quick peek around this because the cool thing, one of the coolest things about coming to Paradise Cove is that you say you pay for the beach. You pay 10 bucks to park or you pay 35 bucks for all day. Now, it seems like a lot, but this is what you get. I mean, it's almost, you know, it's not Santa Monica. It's not a crammed public beach. It's a really nice little beach. Open to the public, it's expensive. But on low tide, which is kind of low tide right now, you can walk along some of the most beautiful coastline. The big houses in Malibu are above us. You know, Cher's house is up here somewhere. I think Streisand's house is up here somewhere. Is this where we found that rotten seal that one time? <laughs> Palos Verdes. Oh, that was a shipwreck hike, isn't it? The one, we went to go see that shipwreck. But God, it was, rot it was a rotten seal and it stunk so bad. But this is sort of like one of those things that only, I don't know, locals know about. And it's such a cool thing. Go around the corner. Look at that. It's all coastline here. It's all, I mean, it's all coastline anyway. But, uh... There are some people out here. But this is part of the part, you, this is part of what you can common experience during the summer months if you want to hang out at the beach and not want to be at the public beach which is really insanely crowded. See there's some of the Malibu houses up there. 
I've seen starfish in here in the past. <laughs> Pretty cool. Welcome to Paradise Cove. A proponent of civil rights, in 1963, Garner marched with Martin Luther King when he gave his famous I Have a Dream speech in Washington, D.C. And in 1969, after this scene was broadcast on the TV show Laugh-In, Garner dealt with several death threats. Mr. Garner, I admire you very much, but um, unfortunately all they'll let me do is shake your hand. <laughs> your place or mine? <laughs> From 1974 to 1980, he played Jim Rockford, a modern-day detective version of the TV show Maverick, on the TV show The Rockford Files. Though without a nice home, he lived in a trailer, and instead of a secretary, he had an answering machine, sort of the anti-detective show at the time. And here's some trivia. Jim Rockford's telephone number, 311-555-2368. James Garner was in almost every scene of every episode of The Rockford Files, earning him about $100,000 per episode. Now, he loved auto racing. He did most of his own stunts, his own driving in The Rockford Files, and that did a real number on his health. He had both knees replaced, amongst other maladies, eventually becoming dependent on painkillers. The prescription drugs took their toll, and he developed stomach ulcers. Now, he had a friendship, an odd friendship, with actor Steve McQueen. They met on The Great Escape in 1963, and they both really loved uh, car racing. It was a curious relationship. If you were to ask Steve McQueen, he would probably say that James Garner was obsessed with him. And James Garner would say, and he did say, that Steve McQueen was a little neurotic. If you were to drive down some street in Brentwood, if you picked out a house that you thought might be James Garner's, this is it. And he lived right below Steve McQueen's old house. Steve McQueen, they said, would make fun of James Garner, they say. And Steve McQueen once, or more than once, when he'd been drinking, would uh, urinate off of his balcony and laugh that he was doing that on to James Garner's house. James Garner smoked pot. He said, grass is smooth. I smoked it for 50 years. I don't know where I'd be without it. It opened my mind to a lot of things, and now its active ingredient, THC, relaxes me and eases my arthritis pain. Now, Peter Fonda once said that after his father, Henry Fonda, died, James Garner and his wife Lois stopped by their house to pay their respects to uh, the family. And while Lois stayed with Henry Fonda's wife, Shirley, James Garner wandered into the guest house with Peter Fonda, and both men lit up. They were inhaling when suddenly Jane Fonda walked in, clearly upset. She had discovered that Shirley, Henry's wife, was keeping Henry's ashes underneath the bed they were sitting on. All three were horrified. Another pop culture iconic moment were the Polaroid camera commercials that he did with the actress Mariette Hartley. Uh, it would, they played a married couple, and they'd banter off of each other, good-natured sort of bickering, and they, were, they made 200-plus of these commercials. Polaroid's One Step is the world's simplest camera. It's America's biggest seller. You just press the button. The sharp, clear color develops in minutes. America's biggest seller, so you made it to the top. Well, the camera did. I just went along for the ride. I thought the one step was your idea. I made a few suggestions. The camera you never focused? No, they thought of that. The motor that hands you the picture? That was theirs, too. What did you do? Why don't you ask me about the little red button? Red? You thought of red? People became so convinced that they were a real couple, that Marriott Hartley, they were both married, actually. They had their own spouses. And Marriott Hartley had a shirt made up saying, I am not James Garner's wife. In his later years, his health began to fail. In 1988, he had quintuple bypass surgery. In 1998, he almost lost a leg and had emergency surgery to unblock an artery. His arthritis became more severe. He had a stroke in 2008 that took its toll on his mobility and speech. He remained mostly in seclusion. According to most published sources, Garner spent most of his time in a wheelchair or in bed. On Saturday, July 19, 2014, emergency personnel were called to this house and found James Garner dead. 
He was 86 years old. His cause of death? Acute myocardial infarction, a heart attack. James Garner was cremated at Forest Lawn and his cremains were given to his family. Here's a bit of trivia for you. The Firebird that he drove in the Rockford Files, the famous gold car, the license plate was 853 OKG. It's always been said that the OKG stands for Garner's Oklahoma roots and the G for Garner's last name. 853, when Garner got his first acting role. Now, Garner himself states in his autobiography, I think the OKG stands for Oklahoma Garner, but I don't know about the 853. Jim Garner once said, I don't regret not having done this or that. I've had a good time. Asked how he'd like to be remembered, he said, quote, with a smile. I'm wearing my Paradise Cove hat. This was given to me my little friend Sadie when she was visiting me uh, in LA, probably in 2005, six or something like that. Only braces. And we went to Paradise Cove and she gave me this. And I will never wear this again because it doesn't fit me. But anyway, um, but this is the end of the James Garner video. I want to thank uh, my new Patreon supporters, uh, Rebecca Bufton and Kay Dennis, and continued support from Steve Valley, D Batch, always, Jason Thomas, and Tim Pratt. Thank you guys very much for your support. Um, I, I, I can't do this without you, so very, very appreciative. And, uh, and thanks very much, everyone, for watching. And thank you for your time, and thank you for your attention. And until next time.